thanks. These extra day shifts are getting me. In 30 years, I've seen riots of all kinds. But I never seen a warden like the biscuit chin one we got now. Scared, to even tried to get the place normal again. Brady, are you panning the warden? He's panning. I know men. I've seen a dozen wardens here, but this one couldn't even manage a dog pound without making all the pups hate him. Yeah, maybe you're right. What burns me up is the way he works the pants off us and lets Sergeant Holden go off on a honeymoon. Holden learned to leave. What's that girl like, uh, the one Jack married? Dress designer, ain't she? So the paper said. He's due back today, isn't he? I think so. My wife says they're moving into the cottage next to ours. It looks like his car coming in on the upper road now. Well, darling, there it is. Oh, it's, it's tremendous. I had no idea it was so huge. Yeah, there are 6,000 men inside. It's quite a big problem handling them. What prison are we going to live? <laughs> How close? Why, right on the grounds, of course. You see that group of cottages over there? Yes. Well, that's it. Which one is yours? I mean, ours. Well, uh, I'll have to wait till I get down there to show you. Oh, that's the jute mill whistle, dear. It's later than I thought. We'll have to get down to the cottage and unpack. Hello, Sergeant. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is Guard Layton, man. Mrs. Holden. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? Guess your cottage is all ready for you. Oh? Which one is ours? Well, you can't see it from here. By the way, Leighton, how's everything inside? Pretty tough. But you know the warden's orders. Can't discuss anything before an outsider. Outsider? Yes, sir. OK. Did he mean me? Well, some of these guards are pretty dumb, dear. Listen, Butch. This fish Jimmy's beeping about not ever getting out of this drum. And he only came into the joint three days ago. Listen, brother, we've been sloughed up here for three weeks. Three weeks? Without even a bath? Yes, without even a manicure. Can you imagine that? After you've done a couple of stretches, Jimmy, you'll get used to it. Look, fellas, I've heard the boys in my neighborhood cut up this place, but I never knew it was this tough. I've worked hard outside for a living, but that jute mill is the toughest job I ever had. You make life hard on a boy when you affirm his cruel realities? He means laugh at the place, kid. Don't let it get you. I won't. I just hate to burn up all this time without learning a trade or something. Trade? Ten hours a day in the jute mill. Better take a pickpocket, kid. It'll come in handy when you get out. Everybody isn't in that jute mill. There are trades. Sure, only the smart guys get the trades. The deputy puts all the kids like you in the mill. See, you're too young, too full of pep. He wants to beat that out of you. Brother, his lack of courage fears the intelligence of boys like James. Like me, I outsmart them ever since I was a kid. Yeah, you outsmart them for three jewels. Four. And I always get a good job, like now, runner in the tailor shop. Maybe I can fix a job for you. Hey, I'll teach you plumbing. Then you can go right from that into blowing safes. See, you gotta learn something this time so that you'll get a good job on your next job. I'll never do time again. <laughs> That's what they all say. You can't miss. You see, all you ever learn in that jute mill is how to duck work. Cheating on tasks is sort of a lifetime job. Yeah, I guess you're right. I have a partner in here. He helped me pass that phony check, but he didn't ask for probation. Mm, smart boy. He come up and started his time right away. You know, that four months you spent in jail don't count. Yeah, I found that out. Louis served four months already. I haven't seen him yet. Wonder where he's working. You mean Louis Howard? That's him. What's the matter, you guys tongue-tied? Tell him, Al. He's in solitary. They're gonna try him for murder. Murder? How can they do that? You read perhaps about a break? My guard get killed? Yeah, but he wasn't in there. Nope, we know he wasn't. Louis had a lot of beefs with the deputy. Couldn't make task in the mill. The deputy beat him up and saw, so Louis said he'd get even. Now, when those guys tried to lamb, the deputy figured he could drag it in a couple of guys he didn't like. 
Tony Binder and Louie. You mean to say he's framing them? Yeah. But if they didn't do anything, how can he? This is prison. The deputy's prison, my boy. Now, the captain wouldn't stand for a frame like that. But he's been out sick and off duty for a month. You mean the deputy can do anything? Yeah. Who's going to stop him? I am. Uh, I won't stand for a rotten deal like this. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell one. Yeah, with a rod, you can tell that deputy planted. Hey, there is a rod planted in here. Inside the prison? Yeah. McNally planted it in the wall of the printing shop of the furniture factory somewhere. He got his throat cut in the shiv pipe before he could use it. I sure wish I could grab it. Someone may know where it's planted. If they do, they're quiet about it. You know, someday that rod's gonna come out smoking. Hey, they're unlocking. The warden's trying to make the place look better. Some investigating board's supposed to be here. You mean the governor's trial board? Yeah, it's the same old cover-up. Hey, what smells so bad? <laughs> you jerk, that's fresh air. Well, yeah, sure, deputy. I'll take charge of the night shift. What? Why, no, no one's spoken to me yet about appearing before a trial board or investigation committee. Why, sure, yeah, I'll be glad to. Yeah, I'll talk it over with you first. All right, so long. Coming. Well, hello, Joe. Come in. Hiya, Holden. Congratulations, boy. Oh, uh, thanks. Well, that's quite a pooch you got there. Hiya, fella. <laughs> well, reporting in the trial board hearing, Joe? Yes, but they haven't got underway yet. Where's Ann? Oh, she's in the bedroom. Sit down, Joe. Sure. Say, uh, Ann tells me she's known you for years. Yep, calls me Uncle Joe. Well, that's fine. Oh, but look, this place is all rather new to her. And I don't want her to do a lot of unnecessary worry. Uncle Joe! Hello, honey. <laughs> oh, well. More beautiful than ever. <laughs> oh, you're a lucky guy. You said it. We're both lucky. You'll have to be, living in the backyard of a prison. Oh, you're an alarmist. I'm going to help Jack in his work. It's a big job, Ann. I think she understands. Yeah, but this is a tough spot for a woman like you, who's been used to living in happy, colorful surroundings. Well, we have a garden and... Yeah, in the shadow of a prison. Oh, that sounds like a phrase from your newspaper. You can't frighten me. All you newspaper men are alike. You never print a line about the constructive work in a prison. Who ever heard of any? Does murder, riots, and escapes come under the heading of constructive work? You don't really mean that. I certainly do. <laughs> but I'm full of both of you. Oh, uh, a prison for you, Ann. To keep the burglars away. Oh, well. Okay. Oh, nice. That's sweet of you, Uncle Joe. Isn't he cute? You bet he is. What's his name? Her name's Brandy. Oh, <laughs> Brandy. What? No soda? I never dilute a good thing. <laughs> well, thanks, William. Now, darling, you have no excuse to be lonesome. Brandy, here I've been married two weeks, and already my husband says you'll have to keep me from being lonesome. Well, you like that. <laughs> You're in early. What's the matter? Have a fight with the old woman? No, just a little indigestion. Stay there another ten minutes. Your relief will be along. Sure, I'll send the first guard that shows up. Okay. Hey, uh, old Brady on 14 post is sick. You mind going down, Bert? Might just as well. Don't leave me stranded, will you? Have a man down in half an hour. Are you sick, too? Who wouldn't be in this place? Hello, five post. Say, there's three cons, plumbers, coming out with games. Pass them up to the front gate. Hello, Jack. Hi. How's the pearly gate business? We're having a time getting plumbers out to the cottages. The water ain't bothered your place, has it? No, we're on the uphill side. But some of those lower cottages are going to be flooded. I've got three men here, Sergeant, to work on that main. OK, send them out. Okay, wait over there, man. Oh, Butch Mason. A new jolt, huh? Hello. Hey, you're getting an outside job pretty quick, aren't you? I'm a good plumber. Oh, wait a minute. Send down a gun. When you take these three men to the cottages, stay under the lights. You'll meet another guard there. And watch those two, particularly Butch. Here comes your gun. 
Oh, how's everything inside? All about the same. I'm up to cons today. Tough on those guys having to spend a month in cells. Well, it was a lot tougher on the wife of the guard they killed. That's right. They tried to lamb on me, I'll blow them to pieces. No, don't do any shooting. There's been enough murder around here to last a long time. Use some judgment. I got you. Get going, man. You don't talk much about the escape, Jack. No, that's all I've been hearing for the last month. I'd like to forget it, for a while anyway. Bothering you? No, but everybody else thinks that's all I want to talk about. This is the first relief. You got your list? Yeah. How many you got? 28. They want four extra for the west wing. There's no one listed for dungeon relief. Well, send Jones down. All right, Jones. Wait a minute. Why, well, that's those plumbers. Call number 10 post, see what's happened over there. Hello, 10 post. Hello. 10 post, that shot over by your way? Over by the end cottage? Hello. 11 post, hello. A shout out by you? Who? Gaines? Fine, fine. Gaines just shot two con plumbers. You two go out and help Gaines. At the cottage is near 11 post. Phone the warden's residence. Right. Hello. What? They made it. Pull that siren. Butch Mason and the extra plumbers have grabbed game. They've got a car and are leaving with him as a shield. Well, send down some guns and notify the warden I'm going after those men. And get help to the other car. Hey, am I supposed to toss tear gas in my leisure moments? Come on, Gene, you're our ace in the hole. You'll never get away with this, Butch. No? No, you're just committing suicide. Well, if I go, I'll take you with me. Now shut up or I might decide to get along without you. Go ahead, you mugs. Hey, somebody coming over here. Get down, you bullies. Go down, please. People, your last one. We only got a couple of slugs, so make every one of them count. Here they come. All right, Mike, you take that one on the left. I'll grab the other one. Okay. Ten feet up. Give me that gun. Cut out the gap and let him have it. All right, Mike, grab that rod. We gotta get out of here. Why don't you give up, Butch? They'll get you too. Oh, shut up, Gaines. Go ahead, Mike. Keep ahead of me, Gaines. Just two guns was barking. He had one and he had the other one. There won't be nobody here to prove any difference, see? You'll get the gas chip on this watch. If I do, you won't be here to see it. I have to. Where's your gun? 
I never had one. Them other two guys had them. They made me come with them. Don't shoot me, please. All right, come on over here. Don't get up. I'll probably get hit. And I don't want even an accidental death on my record. So come on, crawl. All right, men, come on in. Here's Butch on his knees, just praying for you to take him back to prison. Holden gone yet? No, ma'am. Well, I've just come from the post office and I thought I'd drive him home. Will he be long? Oh, I couldn't say, Mrs. Holden. Probably an hour, anyway. Well, then, I guess I won't wait. Oh, hello. I'm Mrs. Holden. Yes, I know. Tell that deputy we need a houseboy right away to bail out the basement. Tell him yourself, there you go. A lot of satisfaction I get. Come on, what's on your mind? You want something? I was just wondering how long before you'd be sending my houseboy out. Can't you women understand that this is a boarding school? We've got serious work to do. There's a gun hidden in there someplace, and I got to get it. What's the matter? Are you women suddenly gone crippled? Can't you do a little housework yourselves? It isn't only Oh, that. I can't argue with you. Anyway, they'll be off this morning. Hmm. Perfect. You were here when Holden passed those plumbers out last week, wasn't you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And you heard him tell Gaines to shoot them down. Oh, well, I... You uh... heard him, didn't you? Yes, sir, I heard him. And you heard him say, just shoot them. That was it, huh? Yes. I thought it was like that. Holden must be trying to build up a reputation as a killer, I guess. Got that straight in your mind about Holden, haven't you? Yes, sir. I'll tell the trial board I heard Holden tell Gaines to kill them guys. That's the idea. Got a spot where I think you can do me some good. Yes, sir. Come on. Well, I'm taking Skin's word for it. If you want to work for me, and you help me in, the old deputy will treat you right. Yes, sir. What are you doing? Just keep my hand in. I mean my feet in. I used to be an actor, deputy. An actor. Your friend's been a pickpocket all of his life. Can a guy have a hobby? And he was no good as a dip, either. Why, you couldn't stick your hand in the bay without knocking over the Frisco Bridge. you were busy before, but we've been very busy. Yes, I know. Your husband not home yet, eh? No, not yet, but I'm expecting him. Breakfast ready. Won't you have a cup of coffee? No, thank you, Miss Holden. I have to be very careful. A lot of these guards' wives would like to give you a cup of coffee with something in it. <laughs> oh, that must be Jack now. The deputy sent me up here. Come in, Jimmy. Here's a good man to do your work. He'll wash, scrub, 
Clean the windows, take care of the flowers, and we'll be a big help to you. That'll be nice. I'm glad to meet you, Jimmy. Mrs. Holden, you must learn how to keep prisoners in their place. Give them orders, but don't get familiar with them. Well, what are you waiting for? Get out in that kitchen and go to work. Yes, sir. Mr. Saunders, in my own home, I think I'm the best judge of my actions. No, 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 Mrs. Holden. See here, I'm not insinuating. I'm broad-minded. But you are Jack Holden's wife. He's a guard here, and guards take orders for me. Just what do you mean? Well, prisoners will try to get you to do favors for them. Mail letters. Have their friends to write to them through you. That I cannot allow. Well, you needn't be afraid I shall break any of your rules. And besides, if you're so afraid of the prisoners corrupting the guard's family, why on earth did you let them out here? That's my business. Uh, I suppose Jack has told you what we have to deal with in there, hasn't he? He never discusses those things with me. Mm, good. He's close mouth. I hope you are the same. Are you trying to tell me how to conduct myself? No, not exactly. But if you don't trust anyone around here, you'll come out a great deal better. Well, I'm not as sentenced to imprisonment. Well, of course not. But a lot of these guards' wives think they are, and yes, and some of the guards talk that way, too. Well, neither Jack nor I feel that way about it. So if you don't mind... Oh, hello, Deputy. Hello. Hello, dear. What are you doing for, Jack? Oh, that's fine. Save my wife a lot of work. Breakfast ready, dear? Oh, yes, in a minute. The deputy wants to talk to you. Uh, don't go, Mrs. Holden. I can see what I want to before you. Jack? I'm afraid the warden's on his way out. Yeah? Did yeah, you hear anything? No. Well, it doesn't matter greatly. These wardens don't run these places, it's us. You and me. Well, perhaps you're right. Mm. Uh, you know, you know, I was telling your wife about the... Telling my wife? My deputy, I'm trying to keep prison affairs away from her. What did you tell her? Oh, nothing in particular, just uh, how to handle the house, boy, and... Uh, oh, I see. Uh, you know, Jack, we've got to stick together in this escape trial. You're going to have a lot to say, and... Uh, I want you to go over that story of yours with me again, and in a couple of men's names that you haven't mentioned. I'll testify only to what I saw. Oh, you're right. Of course, of course. But, you know, things were happening quickly, and, uh, well, there were a lot of men, and maybe you missed something. Do you know that Louis Howard and Tony Binder was near there, don't you? I know. I didn't see them. Now, Jack, you've got a great responsibility on your shoulders, and you're carrying them like a man. Well, then understand me in this. I'll testify only to what I actually saw. Mm. All right. That's right. But you're tired. And I'm going to let you get your sleep. We'll talk about this a little later. Tired, darling? Yes, tired and hungry. Well, come on, sit down. Oh, that place was restless in there. I had to stop two fights between cellmates last night. And I don't like to see that. Well, darling, here's the best breakfast you ever ate. You can forget about in there, can't you? Why, yes, yeah, sure, of course I can. Oh, it's good to come home to you, dear. Hey, can't we get rid of that houseboy for a while? I'll tell him to leave. Oh. He seems like a nice boy, as light as can be. Well, that's fine. He'd better be. Oh, I had a message from Uncle Joe today. Oh, yeah? What do you have to say? Jack. It wasn't true, was it, what the papers said about the way those escaping men were stopped? Huh? Oh, no. no. And you didn't? Me? No, dear, it wasn't me. Oh, I'm so glad. I wish they'd got away. I do. I wish all these men didn't have to be here. Well, so do I, dear, but we shouldn't say that outside our home. It might be misunderstood. Yes, especially by the deputy. Away, you guys, would you? Leave me alone. They're gonna gas me, all right. I'm paid already for what I've done. It's got me half busted. I ain't even been tried yet. Oh, why don't you give me the gas and get it over with? Oh, you're afraid to die. 
I ain't afraid to die. Now, now go away and leave me alone, will you? If it wasn't for all of you, my death in my head. Now you're waiting for that secret nasty. Ever see that place where men are sent to die? I heard all about it. I ain't afraid of it. I'm alone. We're never going to be alone, Rich. Oh, We're going to die. Why not even? I ain't afraid of the gases. You ain't going back, Rich. It's the ship for you. One of the boys is going to stick sharp steel in there. You'll die like that, you double-crosser. No. No easy gas chamber out for you. It's the sheriff for you. Oh, you. oh, I can stand it all. Let me out. <laughs> Close the store and come back in five minutes. Get up off that floor, but stand up. I can't stand a war this. You're gonna die, Butch. Maybe I can stall it a little. You, you mean there's a chance of me ducking the gas? Yeah. One way of making it life. Oh, do anything to save it. I, I don't follow you. You kill both the guard and the Khan with an institution gun. Hold them. I couldn't get away with it, you see. I already told the truth. But you were covering hold them. You'd rather die than spend the rest of your life in prison. Quite simple, isn't it? Well, yeah, but hold it. You want some lead gas? When do I get out of solitary? You ready to sign that affidavit? I'll sign anything you say. All right. I'll see that you get a new prison cell and regular meals. That's how you can help Louis, see? Okay. Pick him to a barrel. Sure that rod will be planted in the Holden Flower Garden? You'll find my friends don't fail me. You'll find it in a row of shrubs, just like I said. Even with a gun in here, those walls are awful high. We don't go that way, Jimmy. Okay, this is the way it works. You bring in the rod. I'm a witness for the defense of Louis' trial. Louis has brought him from Saul to go to court. He's dressing out in the clothing room. Dressing out also to go to court. After I'm dressed out, somebody will guess with me the rod. The cops don't suspect a thing. So there goes me and Louis on our way to court in the car. There's one guard and a driver, see? We pinch him, take the car, and Louis is free instead of being tried for murder. Sounds like it'll work. I know it'll work. But I hate playing the part of the stoolie for the deputy. How else could you help Louis? couldn't. Gee, I wish I didn't have to cross the Holdens. They're really swell people. They'll never know. But don't let the deputy hear you praise them or you'll be back in that jute and they'll be... That guy said Butch just went across the yard whistling. I don't want to set the world on fire. Well, you better not take a lighter cigarette with him in that gas chamber. <laughs> line up, Machado. Line up. Get in line.
You understand that the purpose of this inquiry is to ascertain the truth of the conditions in the prison, Mr. Mason? Yeah. Hey, you want the law down. All the testimony you give is voluntary. You're not under any duress, Mr. Mason. Nope. Them big words ain't for me. And will you just call me Butch, please? That Mr. Mason stuff kind of throws me off my stride, see? Very well, Butch. You escaped with two other men. Well, well who wouldn't? Gaines blasted a couple of plumbers right beside me. Them other two cons, they, they grabbed Gaines and I had to go with them. So they made you escape with them. You had no choice. Sure. Sure, that's the way it was. God, Gaines and the prisoner were killed. You pled guilty to killing the prisoner. Sure, he made me escape. I had to protect myself. Your affidavit here says, Sergeant Holden shot Gaines in that ravine so Gaines could not accuse Holden of ordering him to shoot the two plumbers. Is that true? Well, but look. I got a life jolt now. What I said before don't count. Your affidavit means you will have to testify against Sergeant Holden. Say, I gotta live with them cons inside. I ain't going into no court and testify against nobody. You seem more afraid of the men inside than you are about being truthful. Truth never hurt anyone. Oh, what do you mean that never hurt anybody? I've seen guys get their throat cut for just telling the truth. We're not here to harm anyone. You, deputy, Holden, or any person. Just want to get a true picture of this place. Yeah, that's what you always say. Then when you're through it, you toss it to the wolves. You're afraid of some prisoners inside, right? Only if they find out, well, too much. Ever seen this before? I, I ain't sure. I, I seen shivs like it. When? On my last job. What happened when you saw this spoon before, or one like it? Khan was murdered in the yard. Who killed him? Nobody knew. A lot of us was near him. All of a sudden, he screams and drops. And his spoon was sticking right out of his throat. Do you know why that man was murdered? Yeah, the Khan said he ratted on somebody. You mean he testified falsely against another person? Yes. Can that happen again? Too easy. Well, almost any prisoner at any time in the yard? Or at work, in a cell, anywhere. You have a lifetime to live with prisoners. Can't you get rid of that spoon? You were the only man present. When Gaines was shot? Yeah. The other prisoner? Yeah, but I told how I... An institution gun shot them both. I... Can't you get rid of that? Never mind that spoon. Tell me exactly what happened before Holden captured you. I shot Gaines. I thought I could get away. Both are dead? Yes, before Holden sneaked up. You murdered Gaines, too. That's what I said. I murdered him. I murdered them both. I can't stand that anymore. You realize this may mean an indictment against you for murder? Death by execution? Yes, I know. It was a gas, but... Khan's won't... Crowd around me in the yard, they won't. They won't stick a shiv in my throat. I'll take the gas. I'll, I'll cloak the easy way. <laughs> Tell them cons they can keep that shiv for somebody else. They ain't gonna give it to me. They ain't no. Gentlemen, this inquiry is beginning to get results. I suggest that we adjourn until noon tomorrow and we can question the deputy then. I believe we shall be ready to accept the warden's resignation. I've had a lovely afternoon. Oh, don't, don't, go. don't leave. Let's have one more rubber. Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't play very much. Oh, well, I think you played very well the last time we were at your house. Oh, do you fit a strong note, Mom? Well, what kind would you like me to fit? Oh, I didn't know you were still playing. Oh, oh hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, I promised to fit Rita's dress. She wants it for tonight. Oh. oh, the way the cards are running, I'm ready to quit. Well, if you insist. I'm sorry. Please go on. I'll wait. Oh, well, I must be running along anyway. Is that oh. new, Rita? Let oh. me see it. It'll only take a minute for me to slip into it. running along. I'll go with you. Sorry, I broke up the game. Save me money, you did. Bye, Anne. <laughs> Goodbye. And thanks for the luncheon. You don't mind if I don't go to the door with you? Not at all. Oh, I didn't know it was sore. The dinner isn't on the table when I you bet, get there. I bet my hostess burned up. Oh, it's lovely, Anne. You look grand, Peter. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Bye. I hope I have as much stuff as she has when I'm her age. I can't begin to thank you. But I'm late. Well, you run along home, and I'll see you at the dance tonight. Oh, I forgot. Jack has to appear before the inquiry board tonight. Couldn't he come afterwards? Well, perhaps. I'll try. Do. 
That's so much, Anne. Mrs. Holden, shall I straighten out the room? Yes, Jimmy, go right ahead. Yes, ma'am. Jimmy, is there a chance for you to be paroled? Not for a long time. Well, couldn't Mr. Holden help you? I don't think so. Wait a minute, I want to talk to you. Jimmy, you know when you told me your friend Louie was being framed, I couldn't believe such a thing. I do now. Anything Only a newspaper friend. He said he'd check up on it. Well, I didn't really break my word to you, Jimmy. Mr. Williams will never tell anyone. But if you print it. Well, if you print it, it would do Louis a lot of good. The inquiry board would take it up. Excuse me. Only good could come of their investigation. Jimmy, you're very strange today. What's the matter? Is it something I should know? I've got a hunch. You don't realize that. Deputy has strained your husband into testifying against two innocent men. Jim, what do you mean? How could the deputy frame Jack? This way. The gate guard is going to testify that he heard Mr. Holden order Gaines to kill those two plumbers. Jack didn't. Sure, I know. But the guard will swear he did. The deputy is forcing him to say so. Jimmy, how do you know this? Because I was there at the front gate. I heard it. You mean you actually heard it yourself? Every word. I believe you, Jimmy. I'm glad you told me this. Mr. Holden and I will do everything we can to help you. There's nothing anyone can do. I've got to help myself. And it's funny, but I'm also helping Louis. What's the matter? Is that houseboy? Oh, no, no, it's not that. Well, tell me, dear, what Jack, is it? Do you think the deputy is your friend? Well, sure. Do you honestly believe that? Oh, yes, of course. Because he isn't. Well, what makes you think so? Jack, you must believe me. Hello, Jack. Say, all of those convicts who were to testify for the state have refused to go through with it. Someone smuggled in a newspaper, and they read what is printed about Tony and Louie being framed. Someone is giving out information from here. From here? Yeah. Do you mean who told Mr. Williams? That's exactly... I told Mr. Williams. You? Yeah. Yes, and I do it again. Charlie. Jack, don't you see you can't go through with this? He's demanding that you swear away two men's lives. Deputy, I told you what I'd do. I'll tell only what I saw. Yeah, and if you do, you'll be out of a job the minute you leave the witness chair. Now do you believe me, Jack? I tell you, I know it. I have it positively from, from two of the guards. One of them, the gate guard, was here. He told me how you got him to lie about Jack. Say you didn't. You know you can't say you didn't. Oh, that's a lot of talk. We'll settle this ourselves. No, stool pigeon, you're the cause of this. No, he's not. Yes, he is, the dirty rat. Listen, deputy, I don't know what this is all about. You don't, eh? I'll show you that you can't cross me. Now, don't you? Yeah, I, I ain't gonna hurt you. You've used that leaded cane for the last time. You're not going to beat me, or Louie, or anyone else again. Jimmy. Jimmy, that gun. Please, Mr. Holden. Don't make me use this on you. Come on now, Jimmy. Stay back, I say. Stay back. This is funny. You put me in here to do your dirty work. That puts a rod in my hand. And now you're going to get paid back from your own rotten system. Oh, no, don't shoot, Jimmy. Don't, don't. Don't shoot. 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 Don't shoot.
Don't give me. Don't, don't. You ask for it. That shot means I gotta talk fast. Sit down there, Mrs. Holden. Stay there. Jimmy, please. Holden, you're rated the only square guard in this joint. You don't belong here. It's a cinch she don't. In another year, you'll be like the rat I just shot. You can't fight it. It would lick anyone. Jimmy, you better surrender that gun. You can't get out of here. I know. Maybe I can't get away, but you too can. Wait, Jack, don't. Oh, yes. In six weeks, the prison's destroyed that boy. And further, gentlemen, your own inquiry has made a worse mess of this prison. I cannot agree with you, Mr. Williams. That's your privilege. You ask my opinion. California has several million dollars tied up in prisons. The taxpayers pay over a million dollars a year for what? Riot. Men embittered. Boys destroyed. That has been made clear to us. I should think so. You have a very good picture. After questioning over 50 guards and prisoners, they've really opened up and shown you what a rotten prison is like. Right. You've never been friendly to the governor's administration. But now we want you, through your newspaper, to give this mess the fullest publicity. And pull no punches? No, the newspapers can read every word of testimony and we will give you a complete transcript. Hmm. Fine. We want the people of the state and of the nation to know the facts. It's their problem as well as ours. Okay. Has the warden resigned yet? Yes. A deputy was killed yesterday. Do you intend to clean house on the rest of these old line guards and bring in a set of new men? Train men, you know what has been wrong here. Now give us a constructive suggestion. What would you do? Why? I'd say, get Edgar Hoover to send you a highly trained FBI man. A former army officer. A man who could maintain discipline. An FBI man would not be politically obligated. And he could tear into this job. The governor could appoint him, if the governor was sincere and actually backing you up. And uh, let me read you something. Gentlemen, the appointment of a new warden is exclusively your duty. Find a man who has full knowledge of prisoners and men. And if he has the courage to face this task, honorably work at it, appoint him. Say to him, for me, that he is free of all political obligations. I want only results. Turn the men out of prison better than when they went in. Do you recognize the governor's signature, Mr. Williams? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's treason. Every politician in the country will scream at the governor. <laughs> They'll scream louder when they learn that the old control board has resigned. Not all of them. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the governor's asked me and these two gentlemen to uh, accept an appointment as the new control board. But control board members do not get paid a salary. Mr. Williams, there's such a thing as public service, loyalty to one state and country without compensation. Ever hear of it? No, I, I apologize. But this is so unique, it's sensational. It's not sensational, Mr. Williams. The changes we hope to make should have been made years ago. Please say that this is not a new or daring experiment. We hope to administer a prison without politics, to administer it intelligently. Running a prison intelligently is still sensational. Oh. <laughs> Who's your warden? There are 20 applications. Mm, pointing someone today? No, we hope to finish our inquiry first. There are five more prisoners and guards to question. And as you leave, will you ask the secretary to give you a full report on this inquiry? Sure. Gentlemen, if you're on the level, I'll fight for you. But if this turns into a political card game, uh, tell the secretary to send in the next witness. Okay. Holden, we want to clean up some details regarding the deputy's death. You testified that your houseboy produced a gun and shot the deputy. Did you know the deputy put that houseboy, Jimmy, 
in your home to spy on you? I know, sir. I have no reason to think so. You appreciate that you relax in permitting the boy to obtain the gun? Well, gentlemen, I've discovered how that gun was smuggled in, and I'll take the blame. I expect to be discharged, but let me say this. Neither myself nor anyone else could have prevented that gun from coming into the prison. You mean we haven't sufficient guards? No, sir. What I mean is that so long as men are treated like animals, the spirit of revolt inside a prison will attract guns, and guns will be smuggled in. Then 500 additional guards wouldn't stop it? No, sir. How can we meet this problem? Well, only about 10% of the prisoners are professional felons. The rest are accidental. That is, men who have lived honorably, worked hard, and then made one mistake. Now, this is very true of the younger men. But they all come here as convicts, men convicted of crime. And they only turn bad after the prison routine embitters them and destroys their hopes of ever being able to live decently again. Well, naturally, the criminal 10% trains these men in crime. They have no outlet for their energy? None. And I don't place the blame for this condition on anyone or any controlling group. Prisons have always been like this. And so long as they are, guns and murder will result. Uh, Sergeant, uh, will you excuse us for a moment? Why, oh, certainly, sir. Uh, don't go. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Sit down. Thank you. Holden, you're in a tough spot. You are the key witness against some prisoners for murder. The deputy was killed in your house. There must be a lot of convicts who hate you. What? And yet you tell us the only way we can solve our problem is changing the spirit inside these walls. Yes, sir. Have you the courage to take that job? Are you asking me to take over the wardenship? Oh, this is funny. I came in here expecting to be fired. You are. As a sergeant. But now you're free to accept the wardenship. In charge of 6,000 men. Have you the nerve to tackle a big job like that? Well, gentlemen, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like an hour by myself. We'll be here at night. A guard, hardened by years of prison routine, can be a successful administrator. Jealousies of older employees, possibilities of favoritism. Possibilities of favoritism. Why, Jack won't play favorites. Why can't you let him get started before printing such criticism? That's the editor's comment, not mine. Well, it's very unfair to Jack. What's he doing inside? The very first thing he's going to do is to clean out those solitary cells. Are you Louis Howard? Yes. Stand up. What are you going to beat me for this time? I haven't been making any noise. Unlock the next cell. Yes, sir. There'll be no more beating of men in here. Come here, Louis. You've had a tough break, kid. But I'm changing all that. Going to put me in a different cell? Yes, very different. I haven't even been tried yet. No, and you're not going to be tried. There'll be no more frame-ups in this prison. So get yourself a bath and a shave and have the doctor check you over. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, you better get yourself some sunshine, Louis. I want to talk to you tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right, open up. Come on out. You missed me. Come on out. I'm not going to beat you. Cross your heart and spit. <laughs> no, it's all right. Hello, Sergeant Holden. Warden Holden. Warden? Are you sure you didn't sap me when I stuck my head out? 
No, you're all right. Who put you in here? Well, it's a long story. The deputy misunderstands about Jimmy. Say, can you square me with the deputy? The deputy is dead, Skins. And so is Jimmy. Dead? Now I know you sapped me. <laughs> now look here, Skins, you're a fraud. You know it and I know it. But you don't rate being locked up like this. So go on, get back to your work. Thanks a million, Warden. Any time I can do you a favor... Oh, you can. I want to organize some entertainment. And I'll leave it to you to land up the men with talent. A show? Oh, boys, can I organize a pip? I'll get busy on it right away, Warden. The Skins Miller All-Star Reboot. <laughs> I heard what you told Skins. Does that go for me, too? Which, what goes for you, is entirely in the hands of the district attorney. Transfer Butch and the other men are waiting for the clean cell. Give them beds and food and better lights. Take him away, Finnegan. Come on out. Are you Tony Binder? That's me, Tony. The guy you and the deputy are putting on the spot. Well, that's all over with. You get cleaned up and report to me tomorrow. No trial? No. You'll have a chance to improve yourself, Tony. And I'll help you all I can. Thanks. I don't let you down. Okay, Tony, go ahead. Murphy, I want all these cells torn out. They'll never be used for solitary again. No, don't. Don't wait. I want this loft cleaned out and uh, put in some more windows down there. Paint it and divide it into classrooms. Or, and uh, find out how many of these chairs we have. We might need some more. Well, there's one fellow has no troubles. Things. Well, he didn't even look behind him. I can't stand that. Uh, you just don't appreciate good music, that's all. Go play that thing under some other post or I'll put a slug at you. How do you like that? Get under another post, he says. Or oh, I've been chased from under more posts than he's done duty in. <laughs> <laughs> What's the trouble here? Ah, oh, he's goofy. I've played this tin can for five years and now he wants to shoot me. Well, I heard you play. You seem to be doing all right. You suppose you could teach some of the other boys to play? Yes, sir, I think so. But every time I play, I become the worst insurance risk in the world. Well, report to my office tomorrow. I'm changing that library roof into a practice room for music students. Thank you, sir. Phone in for relief guard to take your post. And report to me out front immediately. Yes, sir. But what have I done? Well, I was going to wait until you came to my office to tell you that. However, you know my orders. There's to be no more shooting in the yard. You've got to shoot only to prevent an escape or to save a life. I'll transfer you to a post that's very quiet.
secretary phone. He said the old line guards resent all these changes. The old line guards? That's not so good. I need their help. The essential of harmony inside. But do you realize that one irritable guard can do more injustice than... Some of them are threatening to quit. They have a series of grievances. We want to see you at 10 o'clock in your office. Well, it's almost 10 now. Oh, darling, this is awful. Well, without their help, I'm sunk. They would have to oppose me just at a time like this. Well, couldn't you impress on them how important their help is? Darling, I, I don't know. Well, might as well get it over with. Well, here we haven't had an escape for more than a year. The prisoners are anxious to work, to live decently and peacefully. And, and here you men come and say it's dangerous. Why, well, you're dealing with human beings, man. Why don't you make them your friends as I do? Get into the spirit of the place. Go on, lift up the corners of your mouth and smile. Go on, smile. Yeah, like this. There. There, that's it. Now, does that hurt? No, it feels all right. Well, okay then, Bert. I'm depending upon you for help. So don't let me down. And you too, Frank. And Al, please, please don't let me down, whatever happens. Oh, okay, fellas. Go on back to your work with a grin, will you? And let me get to mine. That's it. Swell. Go on, Bert, will you? Time's a waste and I got work to do. Thanks a lot, fellas, and we'll forget about the whole thing, huh? classes and taken vocational training must continue to do their usual work and maintain their clean conduct records. I knew there was a catch in it. Work all day long and study in your spare time. And the rest of this junk is all about stenography and making drawings. And not a word about the Skins Miller All-Star Review. And I gave that cross-eyed printer a whole page of dope. The way you read, you think it ought a piece of this joint. You've lived here long enough to be a stockholder yourself. Smart guy. Wait till I tell Holden I didn't get any billing for my show. Tell Holden, has he softened you up? Why, well, he's just putting on a front. I don't believe it. He didn't have to let me attend those, those shorthand classes three times a week at night. No, oh, well, you've got too much of the old prison system in you. First kids, then you. First me what? Getting out of Holden's hand. He tosses you a biscuit, tosses him a job, and now right away the swell guy. Look, Al, I don't have to live here a lifetime to find out what a prison can do to a person. Nor am I going to live here all my life. I want to take something with me, something like a profession or trade, something I can use on the outside. That's what Jimmy said. I'll never understand what made Jimmy turn bad so quickly. He must have been desperate or he wouldn't have done it. Would he? How do I know what he would have done? Well, he shared this cell with you, didn't he? What of it? Didn't he ever say anything? Well, should he? Hey, you keep on like that, and the first thing you know, you'll wind up in a nut house. You want to know why Jimmy died? Yes, very much. He tried to get the gun for you, so you could escape with Big Al. Louis Howard, short hand class. Okay. What'd you tell him for? I thought he had a hunch. I'm not so sure. The kid is gonna be into a good job soon, and I can use him. Don't worry, he'll stay in line. You can toss off your jokes with a grin if you want to. But I'm doing the book, and I've got to have an out. And if I handle it right, that kid can do it for me. You men attending night classes will be allowed in the yards and not locked up until 9 o'clock. You're on your honor to go to classes and return to your cells promptly. Boys, I'm building a store for you in the main yard. Starting next week, you'll not have to wait a month. 
to buy toothpaste, soap, milk, and so forth. You can buy tickets at the Fancy's office. These will be punched at the store as you make your purchase. Here's some more good news for you. Ninety-two percent of the men paroled from here last year have made good. Now, the work I've instituted here is only a prelude to a national organization merging the present prisoner help societies into one harmonious association. When this is done, you men and thousands of other prisoners will be received outside as human beings, retrained for constructive work. I received permission from the Board of Prison Directors to bring our program of rehabilitation directly to the public by a series of weekly radio broadcasts. The programs will be presented from the mess hall stage, and I know that you'll cooperate with me in making these broadcasts truly representative of the men of San Quentin. Show the world that although they sent you here as scrap material, you are returning as finished tools for constructive work. Good night, men. So that's why the orchestra was rehearsing. That's a big piece of pie the warden has cut himself. Well, he can digest it. He's a great guy. Well, that's that. Nice corn, Jack. The boys inside are buying your program. Oh, no, it's not mine. It's their program. Either way, I think it's grand. Now, don't forget, there's a hidden gun inside. And if that ever comes out smoking, it can blow you and your system to pieces. Yes, I've heard that rumor. And we've searched for it for months. You know, that gun is about the last problem left over from the old brutal days. Oh, let's forget about that. Aren't the boys rehearsing tonight? Oh, yes. Would you like to hear it? Yes. All right. Far away, Bill. Cut them closer. Lonesome and sorry because I went away. Before giving you the next free exercise, I want you to uh, practice your horizontal. Start for one or two more lessons in this class. I mean, not be any more blackout for weeks. It's risky. You coming in here with that rot every night? It took me years to find it. I got to keep it with us. When the next blackout comes, we go right out. I got a rope and hook right in the alley below. We go to the wall and old man Bertie's post. The old guy can't hear and he's half blind. How do you know he'll be on the post that night? There's another one here. Tell me what night he's on. Read it. Sure, Ann. What's it say? No, I don't say about that junk. Here, you read it. I sure wish I'd studied. Get one of those other mugs to read it. Wait a minute. They turn me in. I know. We would be down for the next class. I can trust him. Are you sure? We'll find out what it says. Leave your notebooks for correction as you go out. That's all for tonight. Well, Downey, I'm afraid I'm going to be busy for a while, so perhaps you and Joe had better run along. Uh-uh. I'm staying right here until you're ready to leave. This is one night we're having dinner together. Well, all right, then you stay right here. And I'll be back as soon as I can. You know, Ann? If the cons knew this was the two-way system, I bet they wouldn't be so free in their comments. I feel like a spy. I think it's fascinating. You know, uh, every button brings in a different classroom. Shall we? Uh -huh. Speed in typing is obtained by rhythm. It is, in fact, tap dancing with your fingers. You ready? Start. Sounds like a machine gun barrage to me. Get the sum of the angles of an isosceles triangle. You... I know. Then use it in your math. I never did like geometry. I never got that far. You try one. Louie usually comes up early for the second class. Oh, 
sorry. Oh, hello, Al. That's a shorthand. Okay. You should read something for me. Go ahead, Louie. I know you want snitch. Read it for me. Tell me if you don't stall. Well, who hasn't got you on his staff, has he? I'm not on anybody's staff. I'm doing my own time. Remember, I was going to help you once. And you faced a tough rap. You can't turn me down now. Or have you turned wrong? Listen, now. I'm trying to behave myself, see? I'm not going to cross any man that trusts me. I trust you. You don't have to face this dump. So all I want you to do is read it, and then forget it. Make it snappy. The next class starts right away. Get somebody else You'll to read it. You'll read it and like it. Here. Read it. All right. All right, you don't have to get tough about it. Holden will never hear about this break from me. He won't know you're on the lam. Don't get excited. Just read it. It says... Shorthand translation on it is... Old man Brady won't be on that alley post after tonight. He's retiring on pension tomorrow. Isn't that Louis' voice? The kid is giving a shorthand lesson. This is his last watch. We can make it easy with Al's rod. Now, look, I didn't have anything to do with this. I, I just translated that note. Listen, you've got nothing to say about this. I got this gun for business. We're going out of the yard now. You're coming with us. When lockup starts, we lamb. You stick right with us, or else. Get me? Jack, send someone else. No. Louie must have known I'd hear that, and I'm not going to let him down. I better get the night, Sergeant. No, this is the test you predicted. You must let Jack handle it himself. As soon as these guys get in their cells, we'll all duck in the alley. When I get to the wall, I'll let you go. This hole's coming in the yard. What a break. We snatch him and make him take us out. Yeah. Louie, when he gets closer, call him over. He wants to suspect you. Come on, go on, call him. Warden! I'd like to see you for a minute. Al, you can kill me if you have a nerve. But you'll never get out of here alive. I want that gun. You'll get it. You can't miss it. All right, you men. Now, listen to me. Al, I'm going to give you a chance to use that gun. I could call for help. And there are plenty of convicts around here who would back me up. Boys, no matter what happens, don't rush Big Al. Al, I've given you a better break than you've ever deserved. Now you've decided to write your own ticket. So go on, start writing. You're going to take us out of here. If you shoot me, you know what would happen, don't you? You die. Yeah. And there are hundreds of convicts around here who'll trample you to death before you can take two steps. Why, these men are my friends, Al. They have faith in me. So go on and use that gun. Go on and use it. You don't dare. You're yellow. Wait, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. No. No. Boys, this gun has been in here for years. But it's out now. And I think that from now on, we're through with guns. Oh, uh... Let him alone, fellas. I just had to say goodbye. 
Well, remember, Louie, you've got that long future ahead of you. Well, I show them. I know you will, Louie. Thank you. Hey, son, did, uh, did you ever have a pup that you had to keep chained up? No, I, I didn't. Why? Well, I did. And when I'd unleash him, he'd, he'd run wild for a couple of days. But he never got anywhere. Just kept running around in circles. I won't be like that pup, Borden. I'm going to take this in stride. <laughs> well, good luck, son. And remember, the parole officer's your friend. Thank you, and I will. Goodbye, Louie. Goodbye, Mr. Holman. Thanks. Boy, as a credit to you. Yes. And there are others just like him going home every day. I was thinking of the other boy, Jim. If you hadn't changed this whole system, Louie would have ended the same way. Instead, there he goes. Head up, shoulders squared. A brand new boy. Yes, Anne. Louie is a symbol. And I think he carries with him the spirit of the broadcast going out over the air tonight. Marching feet, the bands playing, and cheers from the throats of enthusiastic people express the unified feeling of America today. They are all marching along together. The inmates of San Quentin are doing our part by purchasing United States defense bonds and stamps and working in prison industries that furnish vital materials for the defense program so important to all in our land of liberty. Soldiers marching off to camps and undetermined destinations are easily carried away with the memories of loved ones left behind. We too have memories. We remember those on the outside, the ones we left behind. But now we haven't time to dwell on memories. We have work to do. So fall in line, no time to pine. We'll lift our voices high. We'll all sing our praises together. I hope these broadcasts help the public understand the thousands of ex-convicts just like Louis, who are facing terrific odds in their efforts to make good after they've paid their debt to society. Thank you. 